In this box is the Microsoft Surface Laptop SE, quote unquote, the Chromebook killer. And so what we want to do today is actually take this Chromebook killer and with the power of Chrome OS Flex, turn it into a killer Chromebook. So a quick explanation of what we're doing and why we're doing it today before we jump in this box. As you'll notice, this isn't like a Microsoft box, it's a, a USPS box. And that's because you can't really buy the Surface Laptop SE out at a general store. You can't go to Best Buy and pick one up. And so we had to actually get this one off eBay from someone else. And that's because Microsoft sells these directly to schools and educators. They don't really sell them to consumers. But when we went and visited Google last month, we got the chance to walk through the uh, Chrome OS Flex Labs and see how it is they go about certifying uh, Windows laptops or MacBooks for Chrome OS Flex. So there's a list of hundreds of, of devices of laptops that have a green check by them that, that Google says, hey, this is a certified laptop that will work perfectly. We've tested it with Chrome OS Flex. Well, I thought that meant they put it through like 10 tests and made sure things ran and it didn't crash and then it got a certified check. But it turns out they actually have all of these laptops in this room uh, where they can go and pull these things off the shelf and run this huge battery of tests before they check that thing, check that box and say, this device is really ready for Chrome OS Flex. And it just so happens that the Microsoft Surface Laptop SE is the only Surface device, the only Microsoft Surface device that has that green check by it. And so that intrigued us. We got to kind of mess with one while we were up there. It intrigued us enough to think, we're gonna go buy one of these and right out of the box, we're gonna put Chrome OS Flex on it. So I'm not even gonna to try to boot this thing up into Windows. I'm not gonna to attempt to uh, run the trial, which I could. I could hook this into the USB port and, and mess around and we could use it for a few days and make sure that booting off the USB, it's going to work fine with, with Chrome OS Flex. Instead, we wanna trust Google when they say this thing is certified, it is ready to go. We know, we've tested, I've watched and seen all these tests. We're gonna trust Google in this. We're gonna plug this thing in. We're gonna flip the switch and we're gonna turn this thing into a Chromebook. So before we do that, we have to unbox it. And hopefully the, I don't even wanna say retail packaging because again, this isn't a retail device. It's not like you can go to the store and pick one of these things up. Uh, but hopefully there's some sort of box or something in here. I'm not even completely sure. Oh, yep, there is, sweet. I Cause I think we found a new one. Um, it may be new slightly used I don't I don't really remember uh, and fun story when I first started looking for these because we didn't see them at a store anywhere I thought they'd already like discontinued the thing uh, not the case uh, this is a, a school only situation here it does look like this thing's maybe been used a couple times before um, we'll probably need the charger I would think and again we're gonna do all this live I'm gonna do all this on camera so there may be some some fumbles here or there uh, as we do it but the reason we want to do it live like this is because after seeing google's testing process for this stuff i fully trust that if they say it's got a check mark by it they say it's ready for chrome os flex i'm just gonna believe that they do and this thing's still got like stickers and stuff with it so um i'm gonna imagine it's probably in pretty good shape man this thing reminds me so much of the hp uh, chromebook 11 that uh, google and hp worked together on a long long time ago uh, it's got some really cool aesthetic look to it. Um, it's supposed to be pretty durable. Uh, it's got a Celeron N4120. So that's a Gemini Lake processor, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. So those specs together, the reviews I've read of this thing have not been kind. Uh, it's apparently very slow with Windows on it. So it's gonna be cool to see uh, when we put Chrome OS on here. It's an 11.6 inch screen here. Pretty nice keyboard, not too much flex here. Plastic trackpad, but it's pretty nice. Again, this is the type of thing, like if Google were to go make their own real cheap Chromebook and still put Google's name on it, this is the type of thing I would expect. Like, yeah, all plastic, but attention to details that make things pretty nice. It's supposed to be a TFT uh, uh, screen, so hopefully it's kind of IPS style and the viewing angles will be good, but it looks like it might be dead as a doornail. Let's just see if it's even gonna turn on. I don't see any LEDs on here, so we're probably gonna take a break real quick and let this thing get a little bit of juice um, and then obviously get into the BIOS because when you do this, we have a whole video about how to go about writing the Chrome OS Flex image to a USB stick. 
and how to actually install it on your computer. We're not going to cover that here, uh, but I'm going to take a break real quick, get this thing a little bit of juice, at least enough to get booted up into the BIOS so that we can run this on here. Once you boot into Chrome OS Flex from your USB stick, there's just an option in there that says, yeah, I'd like to write this to the hard drive. We're going to do that right away as soon as we get this going. So let me jump off here, uh, get this thing charged up for just a few minutes, and then we'll continue. Okay, so I know I said in a couple minutes after we charge this thing up, we'll be right back. Uh, for you guys, we are just right back, but you can probably notice I'm in a different color shirt. And a few days have passed at this point, um, and part of that is because of Windows, just being Windows. Uh, and part of that is just some ignorance on my part on uh, how to deal with the BIOS on this device. But we've got it all figured out. I have not messed with Chrome OS Flex on here yet but it is finally uh, able to see the image on this USB stick. So um, one of the things you need to know, and we're gonna link a couple help like tutorial type things uh, in the description. A is how to get in the BIOS. You basically hold down the volume up and power uh, whenever you turn this thing on. But then once you're in the BIOS, you do need to turn off Windows Secure Boot. Um, and so once you've got that turned off, it'll look for uh, other disk images. It would not see the disk image. And that was on top of literally hours of Windows updates. So I'd, I'd logged into this device. Once we got it you know, turned on, I wanted to actually kind of let it do its thing real quick before we went and crammed another operating system onto it. And so you know, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll take the updates. And so it updated, and then it restarted, and then it updated, and then it restarted, and updated and restarted. And it kept doing that. Um, we filmed our podcast. Uh, we played some golf. We did a couple other things. And then finally, it was like done updating and doing all of its stuff in, in Windows fashion. So this put me at, you know late the night that we were filming. Um, and then I had to deal with figuring out how to get it to see this thing. And so I got all that done, but it's, you know, it's been the weekend now since we filmed that. So it wasn't just a few minutes. It ended up turning into a few days. However, we are here now. We are ready to get this thing up and running. And again, I have not tested any of this stuff yet. Uh, we're going to do this right from scratch because we're going to trust that green check mark from Google. All right. So without any further ado, we're going to take our USB disk image, place it in the USB port and go ahead and power this thing on. And what should happen is basically you get a, a Windows boot screen, basically with a big red bar across the top that's saying it's not secure. Um, and so that's just part of it by turning off the secure boot. Unfortunately, you're gonna see that every time you boot into this because there's no way to turn that off in the BIOS. But immediately after that, you'll see Chrome OS Flex load up uh, the way that it's supposed to. Let me adjust this for brightness so that we don't blow out the shot here. And boom, just like that, we have uh, Chrome OS Flex up and running on here. Now, again, I can run this and use this from this USB, uh, but I'm only gonna have like eight gigs of storage to work with. So uh, instead, on this get started, the very first thing you come to here is the option to try it out or to install Chrome OS Flex. And like I said, I've been saying this through this whole video, we're just gonna, we're just gonna jump in, we're gonna do it. I'm not even gonna try anything. I'm going to trust that the technicians with Chrome OS Flex have tested this device enough to give it that green check. And I'm going to click the button. Uh, and you'll see a warning pops up. This is going to erase your entire hard drive. So Windows and everything on it, everything that's on this thing is going to go away after this. Now, that's not to say you can't recover this device. You can get a recovery image from Microsoft for it if you choose. Uh, but it will delete everything and, and overwrite Chrome OS Flex to the entire partition. Uh, of this of this device, which is I think 128 gigs, so workable enough uh, uh, hard drive there. And then the uh, the thing's going to start. It says it could take up to 20 minutes. When we've done this in the past, uh, even when it didn't work uh, the way that we wanted it to, it said 20 minutes and it took like five minutes. So we're going to hop off here um, and let this finish and jump back in the video whenever this part is done. Hopefully, this one doesn't take a couple days. All right, and just like I thought, this took only about three to four minutes. Um, and just like that, it shuts down, pull the USB stick out, hit the power button, and we are, again, I want to keep this from blowing the shot out. We are booted into Chrome OS Flex. So this looks exactly like what it did with the USB stick in, but it's clearly not running off this anymore. This thing is basically a Chromebook at this point. And so uh, let me get logged in real fast, just so I can kind of show you guys around. Uh, the fact that you know this is this isn't like um, cloud ready neverwhere was or neverwhere cloud ready was uh, back in the day where it was multiple versions behind this is going to be on chrome os uh, 107 is what we're on right now 
and it's going to have all the same exact features that you get on your Chromebook. But what I really want to test is like, how are the function keys lining up? Uh, did the trackpad things work? Um, is the operating system moving around okay? Do all the, you know, what does the Windows key, for instance, do? Does the caps lock work? And all of those little things that, that would add up over time to be nuisances, to be honest with you, if they weren't uh, addressed. I want to see if those things are working. So let me, uh, let me get on uh, the Wi-Fi here and actually get logged into this thing and let it get going. But all of your out-of-the-box experience, all of this stuff is going to look... Uh, exactly like it would on on a standard Chromebook. I mean, there's just nothing different about this because again, this isn't some like forked version of Chrome OS. This is Chrome OS the way that you expect it. And so uh, that's a really cool thing uh, and a comforting thing too if, if you're going to go about doing this on a on a Windows device. So let me get logged in here real quick. Okay, got all that stuff out of the way. And again, sign-in process exactly like you would expect on a Chromebook. And this thing's moving along pretty nicely. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like crazy fast or anything. It's a Celeron N4120 processor, which I don't believe we ever saw on a Chromebook. So it's one generation old of the small core processors, but it's got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And I am gonna check real quick uh, just to make sure and like it always does. It jumps on, there's a coffee shop just around the corner. And for some reason, my Chromebooks love to jump on that Wi-Fi. After I've signed in with my Wi-Fi, they like to jump on that Wi-Fi. Uh, but I want to check to make sure real quick that our total available space is there. Uh, so this is a 64 gig device. I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. I said it was 128 gigs. So it's got the full use of the entire uh, hard drive on here. And, and again, like, there's just nothing different here than what you would expect on a Chromebook. So we've taken this Windows device that was really slow uh, when it was using Windows and transformed it basically into a Chromebook. There are no Android apps here, uh, but you've got Google Assistant, so we should be able to toggle that. Let's see. Um, how would I toggle Google Assistant? Oh, there we go. So Windows key and A. Uh, so the Windows key kind of takes the, the place of the, the search slash everything button up here. Uh, so if I hit that, you see my, my app tray comes up there, so it takes the place of that, and caps lock works like it should. Let me check that, I'm, I'm saying stuff. I wanna make sure it actually works. Uh, caps lock, and if Joe, I don't know if Joe's gonna be able to get that or not, but caps lock works the way it's supposed to. So your Windows key becomes your everything key. Um, let's check some function keys. So let's see, we got sound up and down. Don't seem to be working. Mute button does work uh, without hitting function, so let's try function up and down. Nope. So those are behaving like the Chrome OS, uh, like the full screen button when I hit function here. Uh, so those are not mapped properly, unfortunately. So let's see if delete works real quick. That's another key that's on here that we don't get on Chromebook. If I'm clicking there and hit delete, yep, works like you would expect. So you got a dedicated delete button, uh, which is nice. Um, uh, let's, let's try these other function keys. So there's some text there. So we'll go home and I can see the cursor there at the beginning, hit end, cursor goes to the end. Uh, print screen brings up your capture tool like you would expect it to. So they have mapped most of these here. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Brightness up and down don't work. So let's go to function and try. They work with the function key. So uh, that's a little odd. So there's a couple of these function row buttons that, that you need to hold the function key for and some of them that don't work. So uh, they got some work to do there. Um, you can submit feedback. Um, I will be doing that. Uh, let's see what this button does. It's a menu button. No, that's like a context button. So. That's an interesting button. So it's almost like a right click button basically in whatever app you're in. Um, I guess kind of helpful. Uh, are there any other specialty keys on here? I don't see anything else, um, but you know, the keyboard is working exactly as I would expect it to, which is nice. And all of my trackpad, let me get some stuff up here so you can see that stuff working. Um, let me go to a, get a desk. Let's, so let's check all of these here. Um, so three fingers up to go to multitask is fine. Um, if I click on a second tab, I can swipe back and forth, a three finger swipe, awesome, a very useful uh, function of the trackpad. Three finger click uh, closes, so we're gonna swipe back up. We'll try four finger swipe for virtual desks, all good there too. So all of your trackpad functionality works exactly as expected. Um, and again, I mean, this is now a functional Chromebook. Um, it's, it's a Chromebook that is ready to do um, you know, all the stuff that you would expect a Chromebook to do. I just went ahead and took an update uh, to, to juxtapose my experience with Windows. 
I clicked the button while I was talking, it downloaded and installed the update in the background. Um, so we're gonna let that thing uh, update and go here. But my final thoughts here, everything worked the way it was supposed to. The check mark, the only thing I'm seeing that doesn't completely line up, a couple of the function keys aren't precisely where they are, where they need to be. Um, you, you figure your way around those, obviously, if you need to. Um, but in general, the Chromebook is completely, well, I call it the Chromebook, <laughs> the Windows laptop is completely working the way that it's supposed to. I think that's my brightness level. Uh, just took uh, just took an update. You have Google Assistant on here, uh, obviously, so you can do all your Google Assistant related tasks. Again, the only thing different than this in a Chromebook at this point is basically the lack of Android apps. Um, there are ways to actually get the Linux container up and running on this thing too. I don't know how much success you would have with that in this particular processor, but uh, voice matching, Google Assistant, all that stuff works, all your trackpad works. And this device honestly is, oh, I did want to check one other thing before I, before I wrap up here. Uh, let me see, make sure the camera works because obviously that's a big part of using a Chromebook. And I'm gonna point this over at Joe. Hi Joe, camera works. Uh, so that's really cool. I mean, it's like clicking around on this thing right now. It's giving me these huge HP 11, Chromebook 11 vibes. So HP a long time ago partnered with Google to make this pill shaped, very googly Chromebook. And that's kind of what this thing feels like. The, the, the keys are really nice. It's got a great keyboard and a pretty nice trackpad, a pretty decent screen for the price. Now, again, I, I've said this, it's, this isn't a consumer device. Uh, you'll have to go through some different channels or buy one used uh, on eBay or something like that. So I don't, I don't know that this is a device that I would say, hey, go out of your way to go get this thing to put Chrome OS Flex on it. What we really wanted to test here was the fact that this one is a green check. It's a notoriously difficult device to get you know, other stuff booted on because it's a Surface device. And yet Google has made this one uh, you know, a green check certified device. We wanted to install this without even trying, without even checking anything. And we did that. It works. This is a functional Chromebook at this point. And so now the uh, Chromebook killer has become a killer Chromebook. Guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.